Can I uh, call, the, call the meeting to, to order? Um, welcome to this cabinet budget meeting. Um, obviously, we, we've got an uh, important job tonight to do in terms of moving the budget resolution, but I'm obviously mindful of the horrendous weather, and I will try to get the business done with as quickly as possible so that people can, uh, can get home safely. Um, so, so uh, obviously, bear, bear that in mind. Um, just a few preliminaries. Um, can I just, um, on the agenda, inform Cabinet and um, our audience that we are withdrawing item 9, former Pacific Road, Bar Centre and Taylor Street Transport Museum and Tramway Lokenhead is withdrawn. Okay. Um, and I'm going to go through the usual preliminary. So members code of conduct, declarations of interest. Can I just say, I think there's a block interest that we need to declare on the school's budget, because I think all members of the cabinet are school governors, if that's right. So if we can just um, declare that as a, as a block interest. Are there any other cabinet members who wish to declare an interest in any other items? No, just for sure. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, item two, um, the minutes from the last meeting. Can we agree that I can sign them as a correct record? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, so the, the main item tonight is uh, obviously the, um, uh, the budget. Uh, so we'll go to, to item three. Um, which is the uh, detailed report on the revenue budget 2014 to 17. And um, clearly, if I go to the recommendations um, on page 12, cabinets are required to recommend the budget to council on the 25th of February. Um, and the um, issues detailed in this report um, are, are uh, information that's in support of. of of that, um, uh, of that budget, which I will move um, shortly. Um, can I say I will give out now copies of the, the budget resolution? Um, so, can I give that to you? So, I think that should be more than enough. Um, and I would clearly like to make um, some, some comments. Uh, just by way of introducing the uh, the labour the labour resolution, which which I'm moving I'm moving this evening. So please please bear with me. So <clears throat> in terms of the the task ahead of us, can I say just uh, to, to start off with that clearly we we as a council do face continue to face unprecedented and um, what I believe are unfair cuts to our budget by. Um, by central government. We know that by the end of 2016, the, the grant that we received from central government will have been cut by over 50%, a huge reduction. Um, on the 5th of February, uh, just last week, the government announced the final local government finance settlement. Um, I have to say, I, I was very concerned at the lateness of this announcement because um, in, in previous years, we We've had things like the referendum level announced much earlier, so we put a lot of pressure on us to um, finalise our budget. However, we did get the final of government settlement last week, and um, certainly reading through the fine print, I, I think it, it, it just adds the pressures that um, have been heaped upon us as a council and our, on our residents. Um, just wanted to highlight a few examples. Sadly, the local welfare, welfare support funding for people um, in the poorest people in the, in the community was ended without any consultation. Um, the early intervention grants, which was designed to protect the life chances of our young people, has been cut by one million per year. And the cost of providing council tax support and ensuring this keeps in line with inflation um, now falls on the local authority and we, we are making some provision of, of, for that in our budget. However, most, um, I think, disgracefully of all, the government has imposed, I think, the greatest cuts on those who are in most need. I, 
I don't think um, there is any defence uh, for uh, uh, making the, the areas with the highest levels of deprivation take the, um, the biggest cuts, which is what is happening. And, you know, I've said it before, Wirral has lost £152 per person compared to just £2 per head in wealthy North, North Dorset. And I do believe this, this cannot be fair, it cannot be acceptable. And, you know, I want to make clear that we will continue to lobby government in the strongest terms to, to reverse this um, approach to uh, local government funding. I think we all accept we need to reduce the deficit. It's the lack of fairness in the way it's being done that I think is objectionable. At the same time, however, we know we're facing increasing demand for services such as social care, and, and res residents are being hit by the government's decision to cut welfare benefits, you know, measures such as the bedroom tax, and um, uh, energy companies are being allowed to impose huge energy price hikes on our residents. And that all amounts to, you know, we know that wages are not keeping pace with prices, and I think we, many of our residents, many of our families face literally a cost of living crisis, and we need to bear that in mind in uh, moving our budget tonight. Having said all of that, I'm proud that despite the, all of these pressures, um, this administration has progressed from a situation, where I can remind cabinets, where we inherited an overspend of 17 million um, when we took, took power, to a situation today where we have a stable and achievable in-year budget. And I think that's um, a testament to the fantastic work that um, uh, members of the administration and our officers have, have done. Uh, and I, I pay tribute to colleagues who've been involved in that. This, this, this prudent approach, I believe, has enabled us to continue at the most in the most difficult context to focus our efforts on our three key priorities, which I remind people from our corporate plan, attracting investment and jobs, protecting vulnerable people and communities, and narrowing the inequalities gap. Our guiding principles for setting the budget this year, as with, as with last year, has been to spend less on the cost of running the council, um, those with the broadest shoulders must bear the greatest burden, and we will make every effort to mitigate the impact of savings on frontline services. So despite having to make some very difficult decisions, and we, we had to do that in December when we moved our budget options, um, I do believe we have listened to the public of Wirral through the um, uh, uh, Have You Say exercise, which was one of the biggest consultation exercises that any local authority has um, carried out. And those views have helped to inform our budget um, uh, generally and the specific uh, recommendations I'm going to be making tonight. Um, so just to reiterate, nothing I believe is more important than our duty to protect the vulnerable and seek to reduce inequality. So I'm pleased that we will be investing as part of our budget for next year 7.6 million over the next three years to be spent on a range of measures to support older people, young people with learning disabilities and adopters and special guardians. We're spending one million over the next two years on enhancing early intervention and prevention services. And because we firmly believe the best route out of poverty is fair pay and employment, I was proud of this Labour administration last year when we became a living wage council. It's our ambition to progress from there to become a living wage borough. And that is a key priority for the next, next year. As I said in the opening remarks, we're also using this budget to respond to the cost of living crisis. Um, I'm pleased that the vast majority of our older residents will continue to receive a discount on their council tax. I think Wirral is one of maybe a couple of authorities that is still, um, two, two authorities we think, one of two authorities that's still um, uh, providing that. I think it's the right thing to do. Um, we are trying our best to mitigate the government's bedroom tax by investing 100,000 in providing enhanced information and advice services for people on benefits. Um, if I could just say as an aside, I think the best thing this government could do would be to abolish the bedroom tax immediately. I hope they would do that. And we're investing, as I said in my opening remarks, £300,000 to ensure that the poorest members of the community 
do not have to pay an increased proportion of their council tax. Another key priority for us too is to attract investment and growth and jobs. That's a key priority going forward. We're spending £700,000 on continuing the excellent Reach Out programme, which is working in our most deprived areas to get long-term unemployed people back into work. We're investing £356,000 on the introduction of a selective licensing scheme for private rented properties to ensure that every landlord is required to bring their properties up to um, a basic high standard before they reach the market. Um, and we're going to work to attract additional investment and jobs by investing £200,000 in creating an eco economic development unit and team within the council. And also, I'm proud that we're investing an additional £2 million of capital in upgrading our leisure facilities. So Europa Pools, Guinea Gap, West Kirby will be upgraded and we're investing £200,000 in developing two 3G football pitches in Seacombe. So because of our effective management of the Council's finances, tonight I'm able to make some further announcements that I believe will improve the quality of life for our residents. We all know that the Council faces uh, challenging house building targets over the next five years. And we also know that the problems faced by our disadvantaged areas of Wirral, which lost out hugely when the Government axed the Housing Market Renewal Programme, I think it was unforgivable that they left those communities high and dry when there was an expectation that that new housing would be delivered. So I'm proud to announce tonight, as part of our budget, that we will invest next year 1.5 million to kickstart a substantial programme of new affordable housing to be targeted at areas with the highest levels of deprivation. And this funding will generate around 100 new homes. And this is Wirral Council actively and proactively working to improve the uh, quality of life for our poorest residents. I'm proud to propose that tonight as part of our budget. Yeah. Secondly, we have listened to what m many of our residents uh, complain about fly tipping, uh, which is a significant problem in many parts of our borough. And again, I'm announcing tonight that we will reinstate the monthly cleaning of all entries in the borough. Thirdly, we will continue to develop our constituency committees. Um, as we said in December, um, we will uh, allocate a further £200,000 for 2014-15 to be devolved to our four constituency committees. Um, this is enable, to enable us to continue to uh, develop our new approach to neighbourhood working. And during the course of the new financial year, Cabinet is asking officers to work up proposals so that we can devolve more uh, powers and budgets from some of our central departments like Street Scene to each of the constituency committees so that we can transfer more power, responsibility and decision making to our local communities on the ground. And I believe this is localism in action. Uh, next, we uh, will continue, make this clear tonight, we will continue to support the Williamson Art Gallery and Museum. I've been really pleased that we've been able to engage local people and friends groups um, in exploring new models for funding the Williamson Art Gallery in the future. Uh, we recognise that they need more time to develop their proposals uh, and that the saving of 400,000 will take a little longer to deliver. But we are putting in uh, additional provision from our reserves to make sure that the Williamson can continue to function and that the action group has time to develop their business plan. So I want to make that clear. And um, I also am aware of the um, uh, interest around school crossing patrols. Now clearly, uh, I want to make this clear that the Cabinet um, has always been very clear that there should be no compromise around the safety of our children and that the safety of children, uh, local children, is paramount. In December, we asked, we agreed to ask schools to take over the funding of school crossing patrols. Um, given the concerns raised by only a minority of schools, um, 
um, I've asked officers, um, or I'm proposing that officers are instructed to continue discussions with them with an absolute guarantee that no funding is removed um, without the agreement of schools. So make that very clear this evening. And last, but by no means least, I am tonight delighted to announce that the council tax will be frozen in 2014. Yeah. Um, in December of last year, we moved our budget options and it was assumed that we would have a council tax increase of 2%. And I want to make this clear, in previous years, in common with many other authorities of varying political control, we have felt unable to accept the freeze grants as this was not built into the base budget of the council. And we would, if we'd accepted the freeze grant in previous years, merely have created a hole in the following year's budget that could only be plugged by even greater cuts. We've worked really hard to lobby governments and uh, uh, colleagues elsewhere in Merseyside and the North uh, and the LGA have lobbied governments. And I'm pleased to say that we have persuaded them to include, include the freeze element as part of the base budget. And we are, we are pretty clear, <laughs> I'm just checking with the, the chief executive before the meeting, that that has been agreed for the next two years at least. What happens beyond um, 16, 17 is not clear. So on this basis, I'm proposing to Cabinet to accept the council tax freeze grant, but noting that the level of grant equates to only a 1% rise, and that effectively the government is still preventing the income base increasing at a time when we have to make significant savings. So we are we have a funding gap of about 700,000. But again, through prudent financial management, we're able to fill that gap and freeze the council tax of 14, 15. And I want to make it clear, I want to go even further and make it clear that providing the um, regulations around the council tax remain the same, it's my intention, it's the latest Labour administration's intention, to propose a further council tax freeze in 2015-16. So, uh, just to um, conclude, um, there's never, never been a more difficult time, I have to say, to lead a Northern authority than, than now. And I just want to remind Cabinet, although, although um, I think we've achieved uh, a huge amount in the last 18 months, and I'm, um, I think we've got a, a very positive budget, we still have a £44 million savings gap that we need to bridge over the, 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 the next two years. And that will require us to make some very difficult decisions. Um, and, and that will create cha big challenges for all of us. I think the work around the remodelling um, uh, that's going on at the moment is, is essential in order for this council to be fit for purpose, given the vastly reduced budget that we'll have. Um, having said all of that, I am proud that this administration ha has managed the, the seemingly impossible task of restoring this council's finances onto a sound footing, while I believe continuing to strive to adhere to our fundamental principles of protecting vulnerable people wherever we can, driving growth and jobs, addressing poverty, improving aspiration, and narrowing the gap of life's chances for our residents. So it's my pleasure to commend this budget to Cabinet. Thank you. Okay, so um, can I ask for a, a seconder for that budget resolution? Seconded by Anne. Can I see all those in favour? Okay, that is carried unanimously, and that recommendation will go forward to Budget Council on the 25th of February. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, well done. Okay, thank you. Well Okay, I'm going to move us swiftly on because I can hear the roaring wind outside. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, item, okay. Item, item four, folks, is the capital program and financing 2014-17. I'm just going to um, direct you to the recommendations in paragraph 12, page 50, and to propose that we accept those recommendations. Is that agreed? Thank you very much. Uh, 
So that's agreed. We now go on to item five, financial monitoring for 2013-14. This is the month nine um, report. And again, um, don't wish to uh, make any particular, uh, go to any detail here except to move the recommendations as printed in paragraph two on page 63. Those agreed? Agreed. Thank you very much. Um, item, item six is the medium term financial strategy 2014-17. This is a, is a key document for us. It's an it's a essential kind of complement, if you like, to our corporate plan. And I think it provides the financial kind of context and the financial framework within which we prepare the budget, which, which uh, helps us to achieve our very I, I, I want to commend the um, medium term financial strategy to you, but just highlight, which I think is a very telling paragraph 2.2. Which says the savings introduced in the four year period of uh, the spending review, 11, 12, 14, 15, represent the largest reduction in public government spending since the Second World War. And I think that just puts into context the, um, the job, difficult job that we and many other public agencies have got to do. Um, so I thought it was at uh, least worth putting that out. And, and depressingly, the, the last sentence of that paragraph. It's anticipated that further reductions due to austerity will continue until at least 2017. So there doesn't appear to be any end to this, um, you know, this misery, sadly. But in terms of the medium term financial strategy, um, I'm, I'm going to suggest that we, we agree that. In fact, if I can um, direct you to the recommendations on page 4, paragraph 12, um, I'm going to suggest that we, we agree those recommendations. Is that agreed? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so now we move on to children and family services, and the, the item there, key item, is the school's budget for 2014-15. And Tony, you're going to uh, introduce this. Thank you, Mr. Chair, thank you. Um, this is the school's budget for 2014-15. and 15. Um, The school's budget report uh, that you have summarises the main factors that will be taken into account in setting the school's budget, 240 million, 2014 and 15. The overall funding for pupils aged 3 to 16 is maintained in cash terms. In addition, the budget contains a small amount of pro schools. There is funding for the further expansion of two year old provision from September 2014 and for the full year effect of high needs costs for post 16 students. Some details for academies and high needs are still to be finalised and the school's budget will be updated when this information is available. The school's budget report was considered by the school's forum on the 21st of January. The forum agreed the recommendations listed in paragraph 2.1 of this report, and that said that the dedicated school grant funded school's budget for maintained schools and academies is approved at the sum of £240,058,000. The headroom of 1,215,100, which is detailed in paragraph 46, is allocated within the formula for all schools and early years providers. The high needs contingency totaling 908,900 is agreed. A reduction for planned program maintenance PPM of 200,000 is agreed. The use of the Dedicated schools grant reserves totaling 732,000 in setting the school's budget is agreed, and the remaining balance for automatic meter readers is reclassified as a reserve for installation of deep liberators. An additional recommendation is also made in respect of the funding for a school's private finance initiative. The council currently adds. 2.6 million to the ring fence schools budget in respect of the PFI funding gap. 2.3 million of this council funding is as an agreed savings in 15-16 and the remainder is protected at this time. This proposal is to reduce the council funding for PFI by 600,000 in 14-15 rather than 15-16. 14-15 schools budget has already been submitted to the education funding agency and is finalised. However, there is a 1 million approximate schools budget carried forward in 1314 into 1415, 
which can be used to compensate for the 600,000 funding gap. Schools therefore will receive the same budget for 1450 as planned. I've got a resolution, uh, Chair, um, if I can put it forward, that uh, Council regrets that due to its financial challenges, it is unable to fund both PFI affordability gap in 1415 and will reduce the council contribution to the school's budget by 600,000 to 2 million. Officers are instructed to take appropriate actions in respect of the 2014-15 school budget. That's the resolution. Thanks, Tony. I'm, I'm just going to urge you to um, just say a few words uh, about one particular element of this um, school's budget. So, do thank, thank you, Chair. Queen has been raised regards to whether there is an impact on the outstanding calling um, in relation to the school's budget, which, have, which may have a direct impact. But one of them in particular is the proposals for changes to the school's top of payments for students with high needs. Members will be aware that the matter is to be considered by the Policy and Performance Coordinating Committee on the 27th of February. Um, the position with regards to the proposed school budget is that it includes a contingency provision, and that provision is considered sufficient to meet any potential financial implications that may arise as a result of those forthcoming, of the forthcoming calling hearing, and therefore the, pre, the, the proposed budget is both sufficient and sufficiently flexible to address any potential implications that may arise. Um, and that therefore the, the, the budget can be proposed to council for them. Okay, so um, Tony, Tony Smith's moved um, a resolution that we all heard. Um, can, can I ask, can we agree that recommendation? Yeah, okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Tony. Right. Okay. Thank you very much for that, Tony. Uh, and that takes us on to item eight, which is the carbon budget. Uh, I'm going to ask Brian Kenny to introduce this. Brian. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Well, this report advises members of the sorry, that, uh, advises members of the corporate and departmental progress made against the carbon budget, the 2013-14 and the revisions that we need to make to meet the corporate goals for 2014-15. The corporate target is based on the aim of reducing emissions of CO2 by 60% by 2025. To date, the rate at which emissions have been reduced